Hello ladies and gentlemen, Holotide here, and on Wednesday, we are going to see a rather substantial update to Halo Infinite. Ranging from quality of life improvements, sandbox tuning, bug fixes, it looks like 343 took the community feedback and are implementing changes. In this video, I'm going to touch on what I think are the changes you actually need to know about and what I personally think of those changes. Some I don't love, others I'm happy to finally see addressed. But before we get into that, we are grinding away towards 15,000 subscribers on this channel. I know for a fact, 96% of you who watch my videos on Halo content aren't subscribed. If just like a couple of you subbed because you like Halo and you can tolerate me, we would hit that in no time. Like, even before the end of this month. So if you like the video, if you like Halo and you want more, go ahead and subscribe. All right, so first we're gonna speed run. Okay, first off, we're gonna speed run some mode updates, including Super Fiesta, Ranked, King of the Hill, which I think there's a good change. Okay, first up is Super Fiesta. They say that the party's just getting started. The fan favorite mode from Halo 5 will make its explosive return with this update as campaign's unique weapon variants and fully upgraded equipment enter the arena. I think that's cool. Just get rid of the regular Fiesta and add that in. For Ranked, King of the Hill, they took player feedback, and the hill will now spawn in faster at the start of the match. Thank gosh. And there will no longer be that, like, wind-up time when you go into the hill, so, like, it doesn't immediately start giving you points. It's got to go and load up the hill thing before you can start getting points in. I really don't like that, so I'm happy that they changed it. So instead of, like, if you're trying to play smart and you know bobbing in and out of the hill just getting not garbage time but just getting time you know you're kind of punished for doing that um in the current iteration of the game mode so they say that the initial spawn in timer has went from 15 seconds to five good choice the whole wind up period has been completely removed score right away as soon as you get in the hill so you can basically maneuver around the hill and not die but keep getting some points you're not punished for like playing that way i guess Next up, we're going to go over some sandbox balance tuning, and this is one of the ones that I'm kind of sad about. So the first one they talk about is the Disruptor. They say they want to reduce the complexity of the weapon, and they say it currently super combines, deals damage over time, slow Spartan, chain reacts to other players. So what they've done is they will increase the rate of fire and the super combine damage, but it's not going to deal damage over time, and its chain distance has been halved. So I don't love that i would have rather not have the faster fire rate or the i guess the super combine damage to be increased or anything i love the damage over time to this weapon i think that it makes it such a unique weapon in the sandbox you could have got rid of the slowing aspect i don't think that that would have been an issue if you kept the weapon how it is now so it's one of those weird things where it gets a nerf and a buff but it's really i just feel like it's an overall nerf to the weapon i guess we'll have to see how big the uh super combine damage is on like vehicles and stuff so i don't know i'm not I'm not completely sold. So overall, they removed damage over time. Chain distance was 5 world units to 2.5. So take, I don't know what that means. The super combine damage went from 60 to 70. And the rate of fire is now 5 rounds per second. As opposed to 4.285. What a great number. Next up, we have spike grenades. And they say we noticed with its current tuning, spike grenades were dealing high damage. But not requiring as much precision as a frag or plasma grenade. To address this, we're bringing the behavior of Halo infinite spike grenade more in line with halo 3s by tightening the explosion cone and reducing the damage radius while increasing the number of flechettes i'm not gonna lie i hate dying to spike grenades and i love using spike grenades so i guess we're gonna see what happens but it says that the number of the little knife things that shoot out are going from 8 to 16 the travel distance went from 5 world units to 3.5. The area of effect damage radius went from 3.2 world units to 2 world units. The AoE damage went down from 300 to 160. And it says that the little knife things will bounce. Like their behavior will deviate less. I'm not sure. We're, we're going to have to play with them. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. it there's That's a lot of 
changes, I feel like, to one grenade. So we'll have to play with it. Next up is Dynamo. So if you play ranked, you might be extremely happy for this. They wanted to make Dynamo grenades to be used more deliberately during gameplay. So they've reduced the area of effect, reduced the chain distance, and removed its movement slowdown properties while slightly increasing its damage potential. Meh, yeah, we're gonna see. So basically they reduced the area of effect distance from 3.5 world units to two. They reduced the shock chain distance from five world units to two. Increased shock damage per burst from 18 to 21. Removed movement stun from shock damage. Nah. They lowered the arming time from 0.65 to 0.5 seconds. Reduced the delay between shock damage pulses from 0.3 to 0.25, so it'll be faster. And they added one additional shock damage pulse at 2.5 seconds. So that's a lot of changes. I hope that this means... I know a lot of people in ranked hate, you know, the shock nades, especially on like Aquarius. It just completely, you know, busts the map up. And if you just keep playing a team that gets them over and over and over again it's pretty rough it's hard to handle so we'll see what happens i'm not sure how this will affect btb where there are more vehicles and stuff and um you know a lot of people use these nades to control that aspect of the game so we'll see what happens the shroud screen also got an update for ranked where there will only be one charge so that's pretty cool i guess there's a lot of quality of life updates for forge they've also attempted to improve the stability of Forge. So we'll see what happens with that. They're adding an FPS counter on Xbox. One of the biggest things I think that will help the game, whether it's too late or not, is that they're putting the custom games browser on the main menu. So that's great, perfect, good, yes. The matchmaking menu will also receive an update where it will allow twice as many playlists to be visible from five to 10 before you need to scroll down. That's a good change. And it looks like they're kind of combating fear of missing out because when you go to the customization menu, you'll be able to see bundles that have been sold previously and you'll be able to purchase that bundle. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. I guess that's cool for people who missed out on something or didn't have the money or whatever it is. So I'm sure, I know a lot of you hate the shop. Let me know in the comments if you hate the shop. <laughs> They also go into some resolved issues such as server and client stability improvements, theater and observer improvements, and bug fixes. Thank God. It also says that Halo won't crash on launch when attempting to play on PC that's below the minimum specification. specification so we made a video a long time ago. No, I'm not editing that and re-saying specifications. Made a video a long time ago talking about how people couldn't even play the game now if they didn't have a 1060 or higher or whatever it was so that's cool they fixed the wasp gun jamming when playing on bumper jumper so that's cool for people and yeah that's that's pretty much it that's it's a lot to go over um i think that sandbox updates are one of the best and easy ways to keep the game feeling fresh if you're constantly updating the game and tweaking things and taking community feedback into consideration that it will only lead to positive results most of the time. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I think that most of these changes are going to be good. I think that they're going to be enjoyable in the game. But like I said, we're going to find out on Wednesday, May 10th. Let me know if you're excited. I know some of you come in here and you're like, <laughs> Anyways, I love all of you. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And I'll catch you around the ring. Let me know if you made it to the end of the video, actually, and comment Jurassic Park. That would actually be really funny. Um, Yeah, let me know if you're still playing Halo. This is, like, just I'm randomly talking for the outro thing, so, like, yeah. Bye!